As time ebbs and flows, video games continue to make more significant strides toward being realistic with natural looking foliage, dynamic lighting, and this. I think that that's supposed to be a human face. As games begin to look more true to reality, a lot of gamers, myself included, begin to ask why. WHY?! Video games are a form of art, and in an art gallery you don't enjoy the things that look 100% real, you enjoy the things that look 100% cool. As cool as a kickflip? Nothing is as cool as a kickflip. All of the most visually interesting games are ones that take massive risks with their art style. So today, I would like for you to join me on a tour through the Blurbs Art Gallery. Welcome to the Historical Art Exhibit, where the attractions have visual styles on loan from other artistic mediums or areas used to theme the game around that area or that art form. Pentiment uses a style from an age often forgot when discussing art. Its hand-painted 15th century style does heavy lifting in telling Pentiment's story about an artist from that time drawing in that very style. It is an untrod form of immersion wherein the art is turned back upon itself. Its slow gameplay is countered by tedious animation work that comes together to create something entirely unique. Until a game called Incluminati just did it again yesterday, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and ignore that. Next, we turn our attention to Okami. Okami is a game drawn out of the mythology of ancient Japan. And as a great man once said, history is everywhere, even in Japan. That great man was my father, and I don't think he ever actually said that. Okami is done in the classic Japanese woodblock art form. It draws on the player to interact with this art as you use the celestial brush in all facets of gameplay. Its flat textures often lead to the game looking like a drawing in a book that you were able to interact with. Effects like fire and smoke similarly bloom to this melody. While it might not hold up as well today as it did 17 years ago, it still made massive strides towards creating something unique with an art style that has to this day still not been recreated effectively. Our final game in the historical art exhibit will be Cuphead. Just looking at Cuphead evokes roaring jazz bands, silly cartoon sound effects, and comic show hilarity. What Cuphead has done is painstakingly recreate the deliberate art form that was early animation, using all of its principles to gamify that art and make it explorable. The creation of Cuphead is indie game development at its most inspiring. No one can view Inkwell Island without seeing the dedication and love that was poured into these cups. Every frame crafted in such a way to create detailed life within its bosses and arenas. Cuphead is the perfect use of history to create a video game art style and marks the exit of our historical art exhibit. In the traditional art exhibit, works bring forth traditional styles done in strikingly beautiful and unique ways, painting landscapes in as the player explores the secrets of their excellence. First, we turn our attention to Greece. The watercolored world of Greece is a constant painting. A screenshot at any moment of standard gameplay will pull up what looks to be a purpose-crafted cutscene. And then the cutscenes, don't even get me started on the cutscenes, they're really cool as they are used to strike you down with raw emotion. The world of Greece uses its splashed watercolor to shift from one color-coordinated stage of grief to the other and repurposes an otherwise common art form in a way so intentional and incredible. The next game on the wall is Sable. In the vast world of Sable, the traditional minimalist style covers the sandy landscape. What truly paints the world is its dynamic day-night cycle, a cycle that creates vast variety in the color of each landmark. From vibrant cool purples to sizzling yellows and oranges, each array creates iridescent vistas for the player to glide through. As they kick up a linear trail of sand in their wake, thick outlines are used to separate each structure as colors begin to meld into one another. This art style evokes a willing drive for exploration as awareness is heightened by the passing of time created from the movement of the sun. Finally, we will dive into the ocean of Abzu. In the deep crystal blue waters of Abzu is found a polygonal style we have grown accustomed to in video games. What Abzu does to create a unique art style is not perfectly recreate the ocean in the most realistic manner, but rather design an art style around the abundance of life that the ocean represents. Abzu's depths are packed to the brim with color and with movement. This almost idyllic fish tank visual is what Abzu takes from start to finish. At times there is so much visual intake it feels crammed, but upon floating to the surface, gazing upon its vastness, you can see the purpose in every crevice, every seaweed patch, 
every school of fish. Next, we move into the kids' exhibit, where we get a hands-on look at art as we interact with it and morph it to truly see it from new angles. The plucky Swedish world of Toem fits neatly into the kids' section. See? It fits right there! As its diorama-like levels are puzzles for you to pick through, these dioramas are created in the cutest visual style imaginable, one that feels straight out of a children's book. Plucky characters are designed independent of others and mashed together in a black and white world. It all comes together seamlessly, though. Toem does more visually with no colors than most AAA games do with every color. It is a design marvel. The compactness of Toem's world creates a familiar feeling, as if you, the player, live in these places and are just passing through so that you may document them for others to see. At first, Toem's style is what put me off from playing the game, but now it's the main reason I boot it up and pull out my camera. Speaking of dioramas, we now turn our attention to Maquette, a game that features them as a core puzzling mechanic. But Maquette's art style delves far deeper than the beauty of its interlocking puzzles. The game's visual style often feels inspired by its use of light, glittering and drawing that light to pull players' attention to solutions and story beats. It is used to illuminate the vibrant color of Maquette's world as the objects within densely pack each space with life. Wrapping this all together is the use of the paintbrush art style, where the world feels drawn straight out of the protagonist's memory. Maquette's visual style is unique not because I've never seen anything like it, but rather because I've never had a game's art style create potent emotion and mystery like Maquette's does. As we exit the kids' exhibit, we get one last look at the wall and we see dreams. The art style of dreams is mainly based on the creativity of the players within. It's all about what you can dreams up. I hadn't made a joke in a while, so I kind of just tossed that one in there. But the tools the game furnishes the player with are intentionally crafted to make the player's creations all come out with a foggy, dreamlike quality. Not to mention the menus, backgrounds, and music all present a sleepy yet creative flow. The soft colors bring forth a dim beacon as you guide yourself through a space rife with creative energy. It's an art style that often pushes you to drift off and dream up things in an all new way. As for the local artists, we use this exhibit to look inward at games that create new art forms branching upon themselves. Games that begat art forms completely unique and set apart from other mediums, or games that drive those video game art forms to their very peak. As for the local artists, the first exhibit we will see is Death's Door. Death's Door is the most recent in a long line of games to use the isometric style, but I think that it is the perfect iteration of it. Advantaging this perspective to cascade light and shadows over the game world, these shadows actually playing a huge role in the style of Death's Door as clouds roll overhead, light cuts through the forest canopy, and spots of fog dim incoming light. Add to this the glow of lights spattered through the landscape and purposeful set design to create something so picturesque that its design sticks with you for years to come. Death's Door's style is the exemplification of what isometric design can be. The utilitarian design of Minecraft's world is initially a bit off-putting. Before Minecraft, there wasn't really anything that looked like Minecraft. It created a style from something so ugly. Cubes. It spattered procedurally generated cubes across the landscape and then said, have fun with that, and then dipped like your dad getting a carton of milk. It's almost as if this lack of effort to create a visual style became a style of its own. Over the recent years, Microsoft has run with this and actually made Minecraft into a visual treat, but it's undeniable that it kind of always has been. Maybe it's just nostalgia talking, but when that music kicks on and I'm chopping down a blocky tree, a love for it is reignited. And finally, we wrap Wrap our museum tour up with Before Your Eyes. Before Your Eyes is a game about how quickly life will pass you by. So uh, expect another depressing video about it in the future. Great. It is accompanied by a new form of video game art, wherein everything outside of your immediate view is dark. 
it uses this style to press forward the heartbreaking narrative of the game, using your blinks to jump forward in time. It creates a hopeless and pressed in feeling that becomes inescapable. The style is supposed to represent what you remember, as it spotlights only the important pieces of your surrounding. The style is so effective in conveying its story in a way that only a video game could, and this is why it is at the exit of our local artists exhibit. That is it. I hope you enjoyed your visit to the Blurbs Art Gallery. Each piece of art was made by a person or a group with tireless effort, and the best way for you to support them is to check out these works for yourself. These games all set out to do something in a way never done before, so do yourself a favor and find out why they're all on the wall.